guys and welcome to another one of my everyday makeup drawer review videos. This is where we go through my shop, my stash drawer for the month prior, look at the products that I put in here and I kind of give you my thoughts having played around with them for the last month. If you guys have been following this series on my channel for any length of time, you know I like to do sort of a theme for my shop, my stash. I just think it's a fun way for me to kind of go through and pick products. We did an all drugstore shop, my stash uh, two months ago, and then last month was an all luxury. So everything in here is true luxury brands like Natasha Denona and Charlotte Tilbury and Marc Jacobs, etc. We're gonna go through and talk about everything in here. We will clean out this drawer, and then my next video will be introducing the theme for this coming month, and going through and actually shopping all of my drawers. That video will come out very shortly after this one. I will link it down below once it has launched. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about what's in these drawers here. In this front section, I had my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Concealer. I have the shade Too Fair. They actually make a lighter shade than this, but I find this one is plenty light enough for me. It has a sponge tip applicator and a really lovely formula that's matte without being drying. I absolutely love this concealer. Definitely got some good use out of it. I can definitely see that I am making some progress as this pushes up. As of the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Beauty Light Wand, this is in the shade Spotlight. This is her original highlighter. She now has a couple of other shades out, which actually look a little bit more like blushes or deeper highlighters, depending on your skin tone. It is a really lovely, shiny formula. It looks absolutely gorgeous on the lid. I like that it has this sort of twist on off feature as well, which kind of keeps it from coming out of the packaging. The rest of the products stay in here every month. My brow gel from Essence is the one I'm using. I have other ones from AOA, but I had this one uh, left in my stash. It was getting a little bit older, so I thought I would go ahead and use that this month. My Revlon concealer stays in here, as does this Pixi um, Peach Corrector. I am trying to use this guy up, and a little baby Laneige sample of a sleeping mask. These two guys I meant to use and I kept forgetting. So one is the Wonder Glow Instant Soft Focus Beauty Flash from Charlotte Tilbury. It's a little sample. And the other one is her Magic Cream. So this is her primer and her Magic Cream. I really do want to try these and I keep forgetting to grab them. So definitely I'm going to leave these in um, just because I want to use up these little sample packs. And then this whole side of my drawer always stays. I've got a couple of mascaras from CoverGirl, a couple of eyelid primers, one from CoverGirl and one from Urban Decay. Um, my brown and black liquid liner, one from Stila Physi and Physicians Formula, and then a little Wet n Wild. It's an eyebrow pencil, but I use it in my waterline. I learned about that from Emily Noel. On this side were some little single potted eyeshadows that I was playing around with. One is from Christian Dior. This is their Fusion Mono Shadow in Meteor. I learned about this from Alana Davis. I do like this as a sheer wash of gold all over my lid, but I also really like this over the top of other eyeshadows. I find it to be just this really beautiful sort of sparkly top coat. So I did use this several times this last month, both on its own and then over top of other shadows. These are two Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury, one in the shade Betty and the other one in Marie Antoinette. Marie Antoinette is a little bit more of a cool toned bronze shade, um, more of like a taupey bronze. And then Betty is more of your traditional sort of brownish brassy bronze, if you can see the difference there. So that is Marie Antoinette and that is Betty. But what I really appreciate about these two is not only their colors, which are beautiful, but they don't dry out in the pot. I've had Marie Antoinette for probably two years now and it's still going strong, almost like I just got it. I keep the lids on tightly, but they really do last well. In contrast, this Natasha Denona Chroma Crystal in gray brown, I just feel like completely has dried out. I can barely get anything out of here. I tried several times to like try and remove the hard pan on here or see if I could like get underneath this top layer. Like maybe it's just a uh, hard pan and if I just dig underneath, it'll be okay. And I can't really get anything to come out of this. So I am gonna go ahead and declutter this guy. And then the last little potted shadow is from Giorgio Armani. It's an eyes to kill in number four. Four, I think is the number. I don't know what color it is. I want to say when I went to go link this that he's discontinued this, which is unfortunate because it's this perfect gray brown that I just think is absolutely stunning. 
the shade in the pot is also really cool to look at. It's got like cherry and plum and different colors of shimmer throughout it. In the back here are where I put my primers. One was from Tatcha. This is the Silk Canvas. I did really like this, especially on days when I knew I needed my makeup to last. This is one of the few primers where I do feel like if I put this on, I can notice a measurable difference in how long my makeup lasts. It's just very smooth feeling. I have tried the e.l.f. dupe for this. I do think it's very similar. Um, the ingredients are actually very similar. I do prefer this one slightly more. I feel like it's a little silkier and a little more hydrating than the e.l.f. one, but if you're not wanting to spend Tatcha prices, I totally understand. I think the e.l.f. one is like 90% there. And then I also had my Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I have the shade one. Um, I love this. I use this a ton this month. I think it's an absolutely beautiful product. In fact, I reach for this even when it's not in my everyday makeup drawer. Um, it's this is a priming filter that has just a hint of coverage to it. So you could honestly wear this um, on its own. I wouldn't put this all over my face. I would, I would probably spot conceal areas of my face that had discoloration. And then I would go over top of high points of my face, like where I typically put highlighter with this, but it adds just a hint of coverage and this go gorgeous glow. Um, but I also love wearing this underneath um, various uh, foundations as well. So love this. Continue you reach for it. Just think it is one of honestly one of my favorite products in my collection. Moving over, we are looking at my sort of face products section. Let's go ahead and pull these out from the back. Um, this was I was using for my primary under eye setting powder. This is from Hourglass. This is the Veil Mineral Powder. Although I have to be honest, I was also reaching for my little e.l.f. under eye setting powder. I don't know what order these videos are going to go up in, but I'm actually filming a July favorites. I want to try and do favorites on my channel. We'll see how it works and if I really feel like I have products that I could talk about as favorites on a monthly basis or if I need to do it like on a quarterly basis. We'll see. But regardless, um, you would have seen me in that video or you will see me in that video talk about the e.l.f. Um, under eye setting powder that's in that little tiny square jar. I was kind of reaching for that equally with this one because I had left it sitting on top of my vanity and I really enjoy that one. They both do a similar thing. They're both very lightweight under the eyes. They don't dry out my under eyes. They have a blur property that as I pull them down on my cheek slightly starts to blur some of the pores out on my cheek. Um, I love this powder. I really, really do. I raved about it on my channel for a while now. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And then I also had a little Hourglass Trio. This was Dim Light, Incandescent Light, and Radiant Light. Um, dim Light, I like to put all over my skin. I will set my foundation with it. Or if I feel like I have gone a little ham on blush, Dim Light is a great one to kind of tone down that blush on my skin without adding like a ton of coverage or heavy cakey appearance. This one acts almost like a highlighter and I kind of like to use it on the high points of my skin or if I want a really glowy um, finishing powder, I will actually mix both of these together. And then the one at the end here, which is Radiant Light, is a little too deep on my skin for me to use all over, all over but I really like it when I use a matte bronzer or um, a bronzer just needs a little bit of buffing out, like it hasn't blended as seamlessly as I want because it's a little deep on me. I can almost use it like a bronzer topper or something that blends out well on my skin. As you can see there, it's just, it's a little deep on me. So that is the incandescent light and then dim light there, which just totally blends into my skin. While I still have these on my arm, let's pull my other hourglass powder, which is mood light, no. Yeah, mood light. Uh, this one is the more pinky toned powder to dim light. I like this for brightening up my skin. It does add a slight pink tint, but it is like very, very flattering. On someone with light, cool undertones, I find this to be a powder that really does brighten my skin quite a bit, and I really love the consistency of it. And I like setting my makeup with this as well. If I've used a foundation that is just a hint too yellow toned on me, I will frequently set my face with this because I feel like it balances balances out that more yellow undertone and neutralizes it a little bit. And then the last powder I added in here is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is her Airbrush Flawless Filter. I have the shade one. Um, this is also a lovely, lovely powder, super smooth and silky. I don't know why I'm swatching powders. It's not like you can see that there, but well, maybe you can. You can see that one's neutral. That one's a little more pink toned. And then this one here is more neutral. So that is Charlotte Tilbury 
hourglass mood light and hourglass dim light. All right, I accidentally had this sitting over to the side. Let's go ahead and talk about foundations. I had two from Charlotte Tilbury in here. Her Magic Foundation in shade two, um, which I really do like. I think it's a more natural finish foundation and I really, really love the neutral undertone of this. It's not too pink, it's not too peach. It really is really well done in terms of undertone for fair skin because I feel like a lot of foundations can go very peachy or very yellow very quickly. And then this is shade two in her Light Wonder Foundation, which is more lightweight. So this is more of a natural finish. I don't wanna say it's matte, because I don't find this to be matte at all. I would say it's natural finish. I don't think it has like a satin or a glowy finish, but neither is it super matte on my normal skin. So let's just bear that in mind. And then this is her Light Wonder Foundation, also in the shade two. This one is actually a hint darker and deeper than the Magic Foundation. This one is also very lightweight with a, with a sponge I am getting probably I would say light coverage maybe light medium if I build it up but I really like that in the summertime because I feel like a light coverage foundation is perfect I can spot conceal and then my makeup just doesn't feel super heavy this is also one of the most glowiest gorgeous foundations I've ever used on my skin. I just feel like it makes my skin look super healthy and plump and just absolutely gorgeous. So I love this foundation. Um, and actually I was using a combination of these two a few times. I did a get ready with me where I mix these two together. I will link that down below if you wanna see that. And I use products from this drawer. So if you wanna see sort of a luxury get ready with me, I will check out that get ready with me video. I am super excited to try out her newest foundation which is coming out I think later this month. One foundation I am less than happy with honestly is this one from Hourglass. This is their Illusion Hyaluronic Skin Tint. Um, I have the shade Vanilla which I think is the lightest. This in comparison is just really thick feeling and it feels really heavy on my skin and even when I sheer it out I just feel like I feel it like it just feels heavy and I think maybe if you have very dry skin that thickness may come off as moisture but I feel like I can get something that's more lightweight and breathable and skin like in something like this and this I just felt like every time I wore it it was like it was just really heavy feeling and I, I don't know I just I the more I used it this month the less and less I liked it I am actually going to see if a friend wants to give this a whirl and so I'm gonna go ahead and pass this on out of my collection Collection. All right, let's talk blush. So um, I have these two hourglass blushes in here. This is Mood Exposure, and then this is Incandescent Electra. This is obviously mixing incandescent light, which was in the middle of that palette with a coral shade, and you get this beautiful coral pink color. And then Mood Exposure is mixing Mood Light, which is the pinky tone powder with this sort of burgundy shade. Burgundy's not right, it's more of a mauve. And what you get is actually, at least on my skin tone, is a very neutral blush that I think is absolutely gorgeous. This is probably in my top five favorite blushes. I had two from Charlotte Tilbury in there. I had the Love Glow shade, which is more of a pinky tone shade. This one is definitely leaning a little bit lighter and a little more pink than that coral shade from Hourglass. And then I also have their Pillow Talk neutral blush on the outside, sort of a mauve neutral blush, and then a glowy almost highlighter in the middle and there were a couple days where I actually was using this on as a blush and that as a highlighter and it worked out really well. I also had this Marc Jacobs Flesh and Fantasy Duo blush. I love this blush. I think it's absolutely gorgeous and it's slightly more pinky toned than the Pillow Talk blush. It's got a little bit more of a rose undertone to it. And then this is from Natasha Denona. This is their Blush Duo number 10. It has 0222 and 05 Sheer Peachy Nude. Um, this is one where, this is definitely not a blush blush for me, but what I would do is I would put this darker shade um, all over my cheek area and it's glowy and it's absolutely beautiful. And then I would come in over the top of just my cheek and actually just lighten it up and peach up the shade on my, like the actual apples of my cheek with that lighter shade. And I really like the combination of those two. This is definitely not a blush that is like, 
intense enough to wear on its own, but I really like it as a topper over top of this one. I really like this blush duo and I really like this cute little packaging from her. All right, let's talk about this. This is from Hourglass. This was holiday last year. This is their Ambient Lighting Edit Unlocked Palette. I have looked at these little six pan palettes every season they've come out and I've always found reasons not to pick one up, to be totally honest, until last year. But you have two finishing powders, one that I almost use as a bronzer and then a true bronzer in the corner here. So finishing powders, one and two, plus the bronzer. And to be honest, I will sometimes mix those two shades together with my bronzer, because this is a very glowy, glowy bronzer. And so by mixing these two shades together, it actually gives me a really beautiful sort of satin finish as opposed to a pure glow. You've got these two glowy blushes down here and then a highlighter, which I quite frankly keep waiting for them to release highlighters in that formula because they are gorgeous and so much more intense than anything else they've released to date. The intensity of that highlighter, there we go, is so much more intense than anything else they've released to date. So I'm not sure why. They obviously are onto something with a beautiful highlight formula here. This is an example of a face palette where every single shade works for me, and I will frequently take this traveling with me. This has gone on many, many trips, and I also like that it's got this big mirror. All right, let's talk highlighters. I have one from Bobbi Brown here. This is Pink Glow. This is the lightest highlighter she does, and it's almost too dark for me, but I can make it work because it's so reflective, even though it's almost the same color as my skin tone. It just almost looks like I haven't put a highlighter on. It's not super brightening, but my skin just looks wet. It is that gorgeous Baked Gelee formula. And then these two are also Baked Gelee. I bought two from Christian Dior. I've lost the velvet pouch for one. So this is the original shade in 001, which is more nude toned. Um, it's a similar undertone to the Bobbi Brown one, but just less pink, more traditional champagne. And then this is 02. This is the lightest shade that Christian Dior now does. And this one's gonna be more of that icy pink color that is brightening and wet. I just, I love a baked gelée highlighter. I find them to be so gorgeous. We just don't find a ton of examples at the drugstore of this style of formula. The only one I can think of off the top of my head, honestly, are the ones from Pixie, those little duos that they have. And the last product here is the Film Star Bronzing Glow from Charlotte Tilbury. This has gotten so much love and use over the years. Bronzer, highlighter, Great duo, perfect for traveling. I find this works in so many different skin tones. I have taken and used this bronzer on so many different people when I've done bridal makeup and it works on like pretty much everyone from light to I would say a little bit deeper medium skin tone this shade works on and that's just kind of unheard of. So gorgeous packaging, absolutely love it. I definitely feel like it's worth the money. So now we're in the last section. We've got eye and lip products. Um, this palette is from Pat McGrath. This is her Mothership Subliminal palette. One of you guys actually caught in my Shop My Stash video that I hadn't pulled this and I totally missed it while I was going through my drawers and you put it in the comments like, don't you consider Pat McGrath to be luxury? And I went, Yes, I do, and I'm pulling that into the drawer right now. Um, I really did have some fun with that, fun with this palette. Um, it's a little big and bulky, to be honest. I love the pattern of on this palette, but it is a little, I don't know, just a little bulky to deal with. Um, I, package design is not my favorite. I love these shades though. They are not necessarily cool toned. I mean, slightly when you look at these two, but the intensity, especially of these three, I just, I love the depth and the smokiness of all of these. I used all three of these shades on days when I wasn't really wanting to do a ton of makeup and I wore all three of those just on their own, just buffed up through the crease. I put it on very intensely on my lid and then buffed it up and just made a single color smoky eye look and I absolutely loved it. This is a great deepening shade when you do want to deepen. It's super intense, super pigmented, works well as a liner and then you've got this lighter, brighter sort of champagne. I don't know, I really like these neutrals and they're kind of that like murky, grungy neutral that I just think is absolutely gorgeous. So had a lot of fun uh, pulling out this palette. I really wish Pat had decided to stay out of China. Unfortunately, I bought this before I went cruelty-free and Pat McGrath is a, not a cruelty-free brand. Um, I kind of wish she had 
gone the route of Natasha Denona. They're both makeup artists who'd launched luxury brands and, but unfortunately not a cruelty free brand, but I'm going to continue to get good use out of this since it's already in my collection. All right. So let's actually, let's get these out of the way. So these are from Burberry. They're wet dry shadow in number two. I think this is a discontinued shade. I can't remember if I found it or not. It's one of those baked gelée formulas that is sort of that taupey silvery color that I freaking love and I have probably 10 times over my collection but every time I swatch the shade I'm always in love with it. This is absolutely gorgeous. I played around with that a couple of times and then this shade Pale Barley is more of a satin and I really like this on its own on days where I was doing almost like no makeup makeup looks. It just looks like a soft shadow on my eye and because it's not super shiny it just looks like I've got a little bit of depth to my eyes without being super intense so um, I can wear this and almost look like I'm not wearing makeup like no makeup makeup looks I guess I'm repeating myself so I enjoyed and played around with those quite a bit I had two from Charlotte Tilbury I've talked about how Charlotte Tilbury is not necessarily my favorite eyeshadow brand of life but I did have the Dolce Vita palette and I did play around with a couple of shades in here I used this sort of topper shade over top of Betty which is that bronze cream shadow from her and this sort of glittery topper over a uh, cream shadow is absolutely gorgeous and then this works really well as an inner corner highlight because it's not so intense that it looks like I don't know foiled I don't like a foiled inner corner highlight also is a great bourbon shade on me these two shades here are pretty I used this one a little bit to deepen up the look when I did it to be honest I don't think I played around with this uh, burgundy shade much these eyeshadows are fine it's not that they're not pigmented they're just not like I don't know like I had a visceral reaction when I played with Natasha Denona and with Pat McGrath shadows for the first time and I just never had that with her little quads here. And they're also very expensive for what you're getting. Um, this Pillow Talk palette is really pretty though. I have to be honest, I did, um, I do really enjoy this one, but I feel like unless you are fair skinned, I feel like a lot of these shades are just gonna be too pale on you. This gives you a very light, natural look um, to, the, to your lid. Um, it's beautiful but I don't necessarily think it's remarkable, I guess is what I would say. So I did take this traveling, and I have to be honest, I actually really liked it. When I was traveling, I didn't use the purple shades. I was mostly using these neutrally shades down here. These are all satins, but they are so smooth. Like, I just, this bright apricot is just so pretty and shiny and satiny, but not metallic and, I use both of these to kind of build out sort of daytime smoky looks. And I have to be honest, like the quality of this is absolutely beautiful. This is her bridal satin palette. And to get a purple that actually works really well is also incredibly hard. Um, and both purples in here are absolutely a beautiful quality. So I, I do really like this. I don't know if I like it enough to go and purchase more $80 palettes in this format, but I do really enjoy this one in particular. The little baby Natasha Denona palettes in here. I used both of these and traveled with both of these this month. Um, this is the mini Leela palette. I actually did a look using these purple shades and uh, in my Get Ready With Me. So if you wanna see that palette in use, check out that video. And then this is the mini nude palette, which I really, really enjoy as well. It's got some really nice bronzy shades in here, which I, I love a good bronzy eye in the summertime. It's kind of my go-to summer eye is kind of a bronzy lid with either a nude lip or a bright lip. So I really, really enjoyed this one. This is a my makeup palette for last month. I was duping a NYX palette that just came out that I didn't want to buy because I know I don't like the quality of those NYX palettes, but I really like the color scheme. And to be honest, I used this once and I'm kind of miserable and upset at myself for only using this once. So to be honest, I think I fully intend to keep this in next month. And I think I'm gonna add another row based on another palette I wanna dupe. And we'll talk about that in my next video. So I had the Natasha Denona eyeshadow number nine palette. This has some absolutely beautiful green shades. This green has busted and continues to kind of flake out on me. I'm scared to travel with this one because that green has busted so bad on me, but it's such a beautiful green like stunning, stunning green. In fact, all of the shades in here are just, they're like cool tone neutrals with like a hint of green to them. And I just find them to be 
absolutely gorgeous. Like high shine, foil. Like the minute I touched these eyeshadows, I was just flabbergasted. In fact, that silver is just, it's liquid. I don't know how else to describe it. It literally looks like liquid metal. And then this is the Camel palette from Natasha Nonona. Um, it's a nice mix of shadows. You can create beautiful looks with it. I will say these two shades are super similar, so I kind of wish she had done just one or the other. I, although they do end up looking different when swatched, and I do use them to build um, depth because the shade to the end is a little bit darker, as you can see there, than the one in the middle. I still feel like it is largely redundant, and I kind of wish she had done something else. And then I also had my Marc Jacobs palettes in here. So this one is Provocateur. It is the pinky toned one. I like every single shade in here with the exception of this dark shade that has sort of a chunky glitter in it. Um, I like the mattes. I like these berry tones. This pink is actually really fun to kind of lightly go over my uh, crease with after I've laid down some other colors. It just gives a nice sort of berry wash when you kind of add it over the top. I think these are beautiful shadows. I really do enjoy Marc Jacobs eyeshadow formula. And then this is Frivolux. This is his purple palette. Really fun, cool toned shadows in here as well. Um, love a good silver. This is like a perfect steely gray matte. Like this is the most perfect gray mid-toned matte in my collection. So I feel like gray eyeshadow is something I need to play around with a bit more. In fact, in the future, I may try and make like a, a gray toned palette out of my single shadows just to play around with them a little bit more. And then last palette, also from Marc Jacobs. This is his newest one in Stiletto. This is also cool toned. Um, lots of really great neutrals in here. And then this really high shine, almost purpley looking shade. It's gray, but it's also like purple at the same time. I mean, it really is an absolutely stunning shade. So I had a lot of fun with those eyeshadow palettes. All right, last section, lip products. This is just glasses and some balms. So if you have been watching my channel, you've seen me put out a whole bunch of lipstick declutter videos. I don't know if they'll all be out by the time this goes up, but I didn't pull any lip products because I had everything sorted and I was getting ready to do declutter. So I honestly just pulled glosses and lip oils and balms and things like that. So um, this is a little gloss from Dior. This is the Dior Attic Lip Maximizer in 01. It's honestly just a clear gloss, um, but it is nice on days where you just don't want to wear anything or you're looking for a little bit of a shine. I, I don't feel like, I mean, you're buying this for the name and the packaging, which is absolutely gorgeous. Beyond that though, I don't necessarily find it to be like remarkable. It's nice, it's not sticky, it works really well but it's not remarkable. This is also from Dior. This is one of her Dior Attic Lip Glows. This is one of those sort of changing lip balms. It looks like a light coral. Um, this is 04 Coral. It looks like a light coral in the tube. And then as you swatch it, it starts out really light and pale. And then as you build it up on your lips and kind of give it a chance to sink in, it gets sort of deeper and deeper. In fact, I will leave that swatch on here because you'll continue to watch it sort of deepen the longer it sits on my skin. Uh, next up is some Marc Jacobs glasses. This is a little baby sample of cream and sugar, which is more light. I can't wear this one on its own. It's more of a topper because uh, it's so just light and pearly and shiny. This is the shade Skin Deep. This is the one I've probably used the most this month and I really love this sort of cool toned neutral. This one is more opaque, so you can definitely wear it on its own, but it works really well over liners and lipsticks as well. This corally shade is Some Girls, which has a little bit of a shimmer to it, but nothing too intense and it doesn't feel chunky on the lips, but in comparison, you can see that one's a lot more sheer than the shade Skin Deep. And then this is the shade Rebel Rebel. And this one has a really interesting blue shift. Hopefully the camera is picking up that sort of shift to it. Um, this one, it looks a little bit deeper, but it's actually kind of a cool toned uh, mauve nude that has a decent amount of pigmentation to it. So this is one I like to wear on its own as well. And this is partly why I felt like I could skip lipsticks this month entirely, because I do have some high-end glosses that definitely stand up on their own. This is a gloss from Chanel. This is number 11 Glossomer. Um, this is sort of a peachy gold shifting gloss. They've retired this particular formula, but they brought back a new formula, which I think is pretty similar if I'm being honest. And this shade is available. So I had said this was discontinued because I knew 
knew they had discontinued this specific line, but the new line does have this shade as well. So if you are interested in this sort of peachy gold shifting one, um, I will have the link down below. And then this is from Clarins. This is their Instant Light Lip Perfector. This is in the shade 07. This is sort of a cool toned, um, oily gloss. It's almost grazy. Um, I really like this color gloss though on my lips. Just very natural, gives a tint of color. guys, so now this drawer is completely empty and cleaned out. I'm going to go ahead and put all the products back and in my next video we will be shopping my stash for a whole new set of products for this next month. Thanks for watching. Look forward to chatting with you guys down in the comments. Bye.